Hello YouTube! Okay, in this video we are going to explore ASUS Maximus 12 Apex VRM uh, and you know we've done a lot of testing we've gone through all the load line calibrations so let's go over those results and see what load line you need to set let's go okay Let's go over load line coloration tests. So, what I've done, and I'm going to, you know, be reading off my notes here, but uh, what I'm going to do is essentially go over some of my key findings. Uh, before I do that, uh, I'll just go over the methodology that I've used. So, uh, first of all, I've used uh, one of these Fluke digital multimeters. Uh, ASUS motherboard has uh, voltage reading points on the board, which is fantastic. So, in, including ground, so I'm assuming that it's close to the CPU socket. Um, I will probably end up soldering a read point at the back of the socket at some point in the future, but I just uh, I didn't do that at this point. I used the motherboard read points. Uh, what I've done, and let me just go over these notes. So. So I use the Maximus 12 Apex uh, board, uh, Intel Core i9 10900K CPU. I've set the CPU frequency at 4.5 gigahertz, cache at 4.3 gigahertz, and I've um, used uh, load line calibration from level four to level eight, and I've measured each instance of so four, five, six, seven, eight. And I've done two separate uh, voltage uh, uh, set voltage from BIOS, uh, two, uh, two separate values. So I've used, first I've used 1.2 volts and then I've used uh, 1.4 volts. So with 1.2 volts, so the other thing that I've done before I get to that is uh, I've measured or I've loaded Aside from the multimeter, I've also loaded CPU Z to see what CPU Z is reading. I have the uh, values in the Excel file in terms of what version of CPU Z and what version of Prime I use to test. I've also used Intel XTU. So um, CPU Z obviously it, it just reads values. It doesn't. I didn't load anything. I didn't use the inbuilt benchmark. Uh, with uh, Prime 95 that I've used, I've used small FFTs to, to essentially put as much pressure and hurt on the CPU and, and um, uh, vCore and VRM uh, instantly uh, and that generally gave me a good idea of what kind of voltage uh, you know, drop or droop I was uh, uh, essentially getting. So. Um, Anyway, so basically, basic idea was set 1.2, load line calibration 4, go to Windows and check, measure all these. So I've gone ahead and measured them all, then I've calculated the delta, so the difference between what I've set and what I was seeing in Windows, and I used the minimum, minimum or minimal, minimum voltage um, to measure the delta. So uh, when I set 1.2, uh, in BIOS with uh, load line calibration 4, uh, I was seeing uh, 1.19 in CPU Z uh, at idle, and you know that would be essentially indicative of um, us essentially getting the same value that we've set in Windows. But uh, and, and this is where load line different levels of load line. Will obviously affect your load voltage and that's the important one so when you put a CPU under load so something very heavy you know uh, like you know Prime 95 or XDU uh, you're going to see voltage uh, put under pressure and load line was essentially designed by Intel in spec to essentially lower the load voltage uh, and allow the CPU to drop to a base frequency and lower voltage so that your power consumption you know, obviously doesn't go through the roof. Uh, and uh, as, as you increase the load line 
calibration level, your load voltage should be, or delta, between idle and load voltage measured by the voltage meter should become smaller and smaller. So, so the idea is when you're overclocking and manually overclocking, you want to be getting what you're setting in BIOS so that you are, so you know essentially what value you're setting and what you're getting when you're overclocking a particular chip. So when you say I have a five gigahertz CPU, uh, the important bit of info is at what voltage your your CPU is running at, and if it's at one point, you know, one point one, it's an amazing CPU. If it's at one point four, well, it's a bit of a dud. Okay, and and that's going to be one hot chip, and the power consumption figures will be considerably different, uh, as well as the heat output. Uh, okay, so uh, 1.2 volts, load on M4, idle was showing 1.19, under load it dropped to 1.048, huge droop, okay? This is a big delta of 0.15. Um, now that's with CPU-Z. Now I've gone ahead and also measured with uh, the, the uh, digital multimeter and the idle voltage was actually reading a little lower than what CPU-Z. So, uh, you know, software, I have done a diff another video about uh, software readings and actual reading from the uh, VRN itself. So you should check that out. Um, uh, so in this case, it was really 1.183. So there was a small delta in idle, but under load, it actually dropped even more. So it was at 1.04. So 0.16 delta, that's huge. So basically, uh, 4.5 is not a big deal, gigahertz, but when you get to say uh, five gigahertz and your CPU frequency is at the edge, let's say it's at the edge at five, could be at 5.2 or 5.3, if your voltage regulation is not, or load line calibration is not set uh, accurately, you're not going to be stable, right? So, if your CPU, for example, needs 1.35 volts and you set that in BIOS and your load line calibration 4, your CPU voltage will end up drooping somewhere, uh, according to this delta at least, to, what do we say, 1.35? about below 1.2 volts essentially, right? And at that higher voltage, it will probably be even worse, which we will actually discover later. Uh, so essentially you're going to, your voltage will be way too low for that frequency for the CPU to be stable and it'll crash, right? So essentially your load line plays an important part in that. So as we went further up load line, so we went to five, six, seven, and eight, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but one thing that you should pay attention to is this uh, E uh, uh, column. And as you can see by these green values, the delta was becoming smaller and smaller. And what, what I found was that at 1.2 volts, load line calibration eight was in fact the absolute closest value to what you were setting in BIOS. So I was setting 1.2 under the various loads and idle, I was varying between uh, 1.95 idle to heavy load 1.193 and also a mixed load. So XTU is an interesting benchmark. It, uh, it fluctuates between idle and max or really high load. Uh, and I was seeing uh, you know 1.194 to 1.195. Fantastic. Like this is about as good a voltage regulation as it gets, essentially. You, I, I, you know, this is perfect, basically. But the, the uh, issue is, will this also be similar if you use much more voltage? So a lot of people will probably end up, you know, going to about, say, 1.4 volts. Uh, instead of 1. Um, 1.2 and if you were to use load line calibration four, uh, you would be essentially seeing a delta under load of 0.2 watts. That's massive. So basically load line level four calibration is, is junk uh, and you shouldn't use it uh, you know, if you're manually overclocking. And as we obviously go down 
further down, you, as you can see, the green values are starting to reduce again. You would have already seen that as we shared on the screen previously. But anyway, so we've essentially come back again to uh, low line 8, and it is, again, it's dead on. It's essentially uh, prime 95. I mean, if you want to nitpick and say, you know, under heavy low, really, uh, prime 95, the VRM really shouldn't have been going below... 1.4 if that's what I've said in BIOS but that's like nitpicking I mean this is about as good as it gets essentially right uh, what ASUS maybe could have done is provided an extra uh, load line level of maybe 9 and slightly over vaulted in idle but I don't like that personally like I've tested a lot of gigabyte boards and I've found that extreme uh, uh, level load line will do that sometimes it will overvolt the CPU a little bit and then uh, under load will kind of come down but I, I feel like I'm not in a lot of control over the voltage I feel like it's there's a little bit too much fluctuation so as an extreme overclocker for me this is extremely important when I start applying for example you know 1.8 volt, volts which you know we would uh, and then have some um, various degrees of load so for example if, if you know if you benchmarking uh, 3D Mark 6 uh, there are a bunch of GT tests and then CPU tests in the middle and then GT tests again uh, all those will have different loads and if you're on a load line calibration say 9 if it was if it did exist your CPU would be shooting past 1.8 that you've set and then it would potentially be coming just under 1.8 so I'm not a fan of that I love this uh, load line 8 and I will uh, test this motherboard on LM2 and I will test, you know, 1.6, 1.7 and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll find out if that's still happening under liquid nitrogen. To sum up, load line calibration 8, I would recommend. If you're trying to essentially set and get exactly that value in Windows under various degrees of load, um, the other strategy you could employ is, you know, set maybe, let's, let's assume that you're setting 1.4. What you could also do is set uh, load line level 6. Uh, and under prime, that would droop all, uh, all the way to 1.27. But you would potentially be using AVX offset. Uh, so... At regular operations, say games or something like that, your CPU could be potentially running at say 5.2 gigahertz, and as the load increases to something like a heavy AVX load, the if you set minus two AVX in BIOS, you will essentially drop your CPU frequency under load, under AVX load, I should say, to five gigahertz, and the the voltage would probably then uh, be uh, accurate. So, but personally, you know. Bottom line here, load, le load line level 8. Set that and, and you'll be safe. Now, I don't know whether Asus's motherboard all use the same VRM as this VRM on, on, on this board. I haven't inquired, so I probably should find that out. But if the MOSFETs are the same and, and layout and configuration and tuning is the same, you can probably expect similar results with other ASUS boards as well. But until I know that information and may potentially do a little bit of testing on a few other models, I can't really exactly tell you whether that will be the case with whatever motherboard you're using. So, so but in terms of Z490 boards, uh, my testing on Gigabyte was uh, also very similar to what I found in the past, including on their you know, AMD-based boards, like X-Series boards. So with Gigabyte, load line level turbo is for me uh, the go-to and it's quite similar to this. <coughs> and on a SUS board, load line level 8 is what you should be setting and that will be, again, giving you the value that you're roughly setting in BIOS. In fact, this one is remarkably good. So, uh, big thumbs up. Thanks, guys.